It is my distinct privilege today to introduce a young man of incredible strength and courage, Rusty Booker. I met Rusty about three weeks ago at a forum I hosted on Disconnected Youth in our mutual hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Rusty spoke of his experience with abuse, how he ran away at age 12, and about his placement in five different foster homes. The power of his story comes not simply from the hand that he was dealt, but the way that he played it. So often when we think of disconnected youth, youth we think often correctly of helplessness and victimization. But this uh, exceptional young man uh, has long since left behind helplessness in the role of a victim. Uh, after a childhood of neglect, he took control of his life, set himself on a path toward adult success. He's determined to get a high school degree and join the police force. Also, at the age of 17, he's dedicated himself to helping others who suffered like he did, reaching out to kids on the street. Uh, Rusty is the success story. I thank him for being here to share his story. He's demonstrated an awful lot of courage in his life, and today is uh, one more chapter in displaying courage. Uh, I also want to thank Safe Place for ensuring that he could be here today. I just want to thank you, all of you for giving me an opportunity to share my story with you. I was born on mom at 17. Living with my mom and stepfather was difficult. My stepfather came home every night drunk and would beat my mom. My brother and I didn't sleep well, not knowing if we would be next. At age eight, my parents finally divorced, and my mom started drinking. She never laid a hand on my brother and I, drinking was her way of forgetting the past. I was sitting with my stepfather and his wife at age nine. The abuse soon started afterwards. My brother soon came afterwards. I was placed in foster care, and then very quickly and unbelievably back with my stepfather. Months after I was placed back with my stepfather, I started sending letters to my, to my previous foster family from an abandoned house in mailbox, so my step-parents wouldn't know. A month or so after the letters, I built the courage to run. I contacted my previous foster family, and they told me to look for a safe place instead of going back home. I went to a library that had a safe place sign on the front. I was 12 at the time, and until that day, didn't know what safe place was, but was glad that there was a public place, like the library, where I could get help. They took me to the YMCA Safe Place Services Shelter in Louisville. When I got to the shelter, the staff welcomed me. I felt safe for the first time in many years. They did an intake, provided me clothes, hygiene products, and clean linens. The next morning, I had a warm breakfast, and I met with a caseworker who would change my life forever, Mr. Bill. When we talked, at first, I had a hard time connecting with him and getting solutions, but it wasn't, but it wasn't long before I was sharing my life story with him. The shelter determined that going home was not going to be possible, and I understood. Within two weeks, they arranged for me a place to be placed in a foster home with a loving family. But I still had problems, and over the next several years, I was placed in psychiatric hospitals, and along with that came therapy and meds. Then came another foster home, group homes, even jail. I started using drugs, and after witnessing my friend, he had shot in a deal gone bad, I thought to myself, nobody asked me what I wanted. I felt like I was to blame and powerless to change my life. I had no family, no home, and at this rate, no future. After another failed foster home, I went to Safe Place again and asked for help. I knew the shelter was there for me. Again, I felt safe and understood. I met with Miss Missy and told her everything that I had been through. She didn't judge me or laugh at me. She understood me and made me feel wanted. The next day, I met Mr. Kwan, a man with the story for every lesson he learned that I needed to learn or had already, but in a rougher way. He, too, understood me. He has taught me very many ways of how to not let little things get blown away out of proportion. And then there's Mr. Bill. When I met with him again after several years, I gave him a hug. I felt so relieved to see someone I knew that really cared about me and loved me more than anyone I knew at the time. I'm not really going to put his business out on Front Street, but I will say that he's been through a huge amount of things that other kids and myself can relate to. Mr. Bill, Miss Missy, and Mr. Quine, and the other wonderful and lazy staff at Safe Place Services are keeping me drug and alcohol free. I can't remember the last time I felt this good by myself. To some, these people I mentioned may just be ordinary people, but to me and 600 other kids a year in Louisville, these people are heroes. Mr. Bill even gave up his vacation to bring me to D.C. so I could testify. There are 14 kids at the Safe Place Services right now who have experienced many of the same things that I have. I would like to be able to convince kids that Safe Place is the first step to getting help 
and the shelter is a place where they can feel safe and begin to solve their problems. Many times when I was younger, I wanted to run for help, but when I was in a rural area, there weren't many places to go. Louisville is a smaller city compared to here in D.C., L.A., or even Atlanta. Kids all around the country, thousands of kids, feel like I did. No one understands them and they need a place to turn. I hope that they too will be able to find safe place sites, get to a shelter, feel safe, and have a bed, a warm meal, and someone to talk to instead of roaming the streets or bumming money. I'm asking for your help to make a difference for kids just like me, because every kid deserves a second chance. I plan to finish my GED and plan to go to college and get a degree in law enforcement. Thank you for letting me share the experience that I have had. I know I'm headed in the right direction. I used to always ask myself why me. Maybe this is why. Maybe what I've been through can make a difference for someone else. I hope you will make it possible for kids like me to have these programs available in this city. Thank you.